how we feel. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. oh that's so good. going to bring out the Morgana. And like oh. you say, this is amazing. Can also help break it so that you can have some level of power. And I, I would have loved the crank, obviously, but I do think that the composition loses a lot of staying power and becomes really flippy if you don't go for an engage support, right? Because like, if you have... Quandong Creek seem to be just going from strength to strength. Put an AD carry in the mid lane, AP in the jungle, and you're feeling good. Jump out of the rift, game number one. Aha. Because uh, going to be starting off with an evader, uh, obviously was spotted, so we might see some uh, vertical jungling happening here. Do note that Morgana's clear obviously is going to be a whole lot faster. And Oh, this is actually really cute here. Ooh. From Cuz, because your Raptor clear speed take is so insane. And, uh, he's gonna definitely be able to mess with Lucid here. Do need to be careful though, because Morgana is one of those champions that uh, is not necessarily the strongest in the pure 1v1. Is all right. Still, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna play this last. 672 days ago. I think maybe a bit of waste of time. I understand the idea of trying to contest this, but realistically, if you have to catch bot wave, you're not going to be able to get anything going. So nicely done there, aiming at Kellen, effectively securing DK to Drake. Yep. And yeah. The the, clip, the the speed of Morgana, particularly with you know the Void Mites, it's um, it's it's a little silly. Yeah, there are a bit of a. But they haven't. If DK win, this is, would be their first game win. Oh no, Aiming gonna get bound, immediately has to cleanse and flash and use everything to get himself out. Some attempt from Lucid, ha does have level 6 available right now. I don't think they know about the ward in the middle brush, but it might not matter! Oh yeah, Kingen's going to set it up gloriously, first blood! And so well deserved! There's a reason why this guy's win rate's so good. And that's what I was just getting into. That means that Lucid has only one option, and that's force ganks around the map. Viking, and specifically, sets him up oh. and ensures that Lucid okay. doesn't just walk around without okay, being okay. able to do anything. Oh, the body tabata, tabata. slam position yeah. as well. Absolutely gorgeous. Couldn't have played that better, I don't think. Man! It's not quite League of Warmogs like it used to be, but... It's pretty close. As now Lucid makes his way in and Leaper, oh dear, he is very, very dead. That's back to back for Lucid. Because of course, in the last fight, he didn't even need to ult. He didn't. Thousand gold in it. And that means basically nothing, especially when we're one Drake apiece and six scrubs going over to Quandong Freaks with a Tristana as well. As, okay, there's a bit of a crash and the Impale as well. Kingen just seems to only barely notice that all of this stuff is happening as he gets a phase rush and books it out of there. He is unbothered, Atlas. Wow. Not in the slightest impressed with what happened there. As, all right, there's the Vault Breaker flash. And once again, Bulldog, this time in trouble. The flash forward from Showmaker, though, looking for some more rocks as Bulldog makes it out. Oh, only needed one more of those volleys to be threaded through as there's the Extendo Beam, Leaper taking some damage from aiming as Teleport comes in. And he'll road Shelly all the way forward. Kingen looks for the opportunity. There's the value of the Black Shield, but can they get more? The answer's no, as the Seismic Shove does miss. X-Flash to get Andil over. And just a jockeying for position. The Dragon's still mad as Weaver's Wall tries to buy them some space. We'll see whether they can burst this one down before Cuz can get in, but he makes it, and there's the steal! Now Lucid trying to find the angle, but there is the crash into the wall. Aiming thrown down the ulti, though. Can the Zeri find some opportunities? And there goes the Morgana as kill number one. Andil looking for an opportunity, and the Trisha Barrage goes wide. It's another one into the bank of aiming. And I think we might be writing some things down on some paper and stuff about what's happening with Azeri. Oh boy! E for Wisp in his inventory, so it doesn't look that likely as Leaper. Here's the jump scare, manages to get the Flash Vault Breaker as Leaper gets out. Okay, Magnus Storm is going to go wide, but gets the Flash out of Lucid. Showmaker throwing rocks around and Dudu doing exactly the same thing. It's a throwing rocks party. Really big moment here. Lucid is trying to heal off of his camp, so DK can't really go for an engage right now. He is in the pit. Yeah, gets into the back. Okay, let's see where the Bulldog's going to be able to deal with him here as the Vault Break is getting charged. Looking for the Tristana. The buffer is good, though. The Black Shield also going to be utilized. 
as now Bulldog is just going one versus two, getting rid of them. Leaper is going to turn onto Showmaker, but he's going to get collapsed on. There's the Impale. It's found Viserri. And can Aiming actually stand his ground? The answer's no. The Peel Machines, they weren't there. And the Kwandong Freaks, not only will they be able to grab the soul point, they'll also wipe the team fight. Kwandong Freaks come up huge. And Bulldog pretty happy about how it's all going as we're back in live and now Andil is in a little bit of trouble getting nice. thrown around. There's a cease and desist as Cuz getting taken down very low. That's another kill for aiming. And a teleport is coming forward. Nice seismic shove there onto Bulldog, but he is going to be able to laugh that one off pretty comfortably. And that might put a little bit of a dampening on the whole Baron play situation. Oh, well, plan. DK is going to be looking for a pick. Oh, oh again. dear. Once again, the jump scare comes forward. Bulldog trying to get himself out. There's the black shield. And once again, Cuz's nope button is going to come off Trump's. And this is what we were saying earlier. It not only allows you to defensively keep your carry safe when they get engaged on, but it also means that you can play so much more aggressive and man, Bull Bulldog is loving that. Oh yeah. It's, it takes a little bit of wind out of the sails, but because the health bars on DK still get relatively low, I think they might have to be careful as Kingen is still looking for an engage, has his ultimate as well. Yeah, let's see how many Cuz can save here. They're looking good here, Atlas. Yeah, flank angle for the Gragas. I don't think Kingen's been seen either as Bulldog was tanking up this dragon. The rest of Quantum Freaks just wanting to be as a group, wanting to be together. That's a lot of damage onto Kellen. Immediately has to use that redemption. Gets a whole bunch of health back because of it. As in goes Lucid, looks for Andil. But now he has to flash out. The Ignite is on him. He gets the shield, but it is done. That is Soul. They don't lose anyone, but I mean... There's a bit of healing, I guess. As, all right, teleports coming in from all around. Lucid tanks up a whole lot, but does eventually get his prize. Is now king and he'll get impaled. The rest of the team needs to come over and help That's him out. Tank. And he's so incredibly tanky. You're exactly right. The redemption will come through to also heal him up. Lucid kind of wishes it healed for a little bit more. Is now aiming, wanting to find a little bit extra. Five versus four here in favor of D+. Another opportunity if they can protect the president, even Dudu's taking a lot of damage here from Aiming, who's continually getting shielded. Showmaker! Lucid's taking collateral damages now. Yeah, Showmaker wants to cut up this fight. Let's see whether this flank angle is going to work as Aiming flashes in. Okay! Leap is able to offer a few Mystic shots back, and there's a Magnus Storm used only onto King, and Aiming's at about 10 health, but they take down the Morgana. They get their couple of extra kills. And D+, plus, they win a fight, but they're not healthy enough to do Baron. Oh, that's not enough, Atlas. Has netted them about 2.5k, not the most massive of the uh, Baron power plays, but really helping right the ship here. Oh, and for Kwangdong, you gotta land the poke. I think Leaper has been doing a really good job of consistently finding those ults, finding those Qs. Because if he can hit a binding, that can be the difference between winning and losing a fight. But you see the vision toggle here. Oh. They don't have a whole lot of info. Aiming is just over the wall. Okay, they spot out the Cuz isn't there. They'll find a cease and desist. Andil's going to explode. Dudu, he's out of there because special delivery from Kingen. Oh, the Kingen Renaissance, man. You love to see it. And D plus Kia. They'll head towards the Elder. And they lost this game until they won. For the whole year. And it's been... That voice, that person saying, Cuz isn't there, go. It doesn't matter who you kill, kill them. Let's go in and let's win this game. I, I yep. was really kind of still hoping that he would. Oh, this is a little bit crazy. Is okay. Lucy going to take a fair bit of damage. Does end up punching the turret, but takes so much. Hang on, there's another delivery as the dragon's getting angry. Look at these health bars, though. Cuz is able to take down King and the burn. Bulldog down, right. down, down, and there's the explosion. Been so huge for the tempo is okay. In goes Lucid and just explodes on his way. I don't know about that one, but Andil is still in so much trouble. They're fighting against an Elder Dragon and they're kind of doing all right. The seismic shove is going to take down Leaper though. And Showmaker's trying to kill Dudu. It's not quite working. Aiming's dead. Showmaker's on half a health. Making his way in, but the uh, wall is, is going to separate it. Yeah, this is just going to get burst. Look at the bot Unless they're going well. to fully commit. Bot wave, like you say, is moving in, finding it to connect onto Kingen. But he gets a big old shield. 
Nice shattering strike to get rid of that, but oh, look that's a Baron, way. and now look they're looking to try way. and get out exactly. And Lucid, he's behind. He might actually be able to stop this back as well, decides instead that he does not want to. Oh, there it is, the smite. And that means Dudu can't go back home. Oh, that might be the bot. Uh, oh, this could be in This could just be inhib, yeah. No, 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 for sure, because... Oh! Yeah, Nexus turret goes down at the same time. It's gonna be Ooh. huge. Speaking of poke, all right, Lucid. Oh, oh no! Does a flash. Yeah, they do push them away. You can see King and just trying to keep them interested. Dark Binding goes wide. Look at the base. Bot wave is still big, and Showmaker is just pushing here. But Guangdong, they know. Yeah. Are we just going to flip it again? I guess so. Spatula is at the ready, ladies and gentlemen. As in comes Showmaker. There is the Elder, and down goes Lucid. The Impale does absolutely nothing, though. And so Guangdong freaks. They'll lose no one. They kill Lucid. But D Plus is still on the map. And gonna close his eyes and hope it works out. Well, let's see what happens here. Showmaker dives forward. The rocks are down. Cousin that's Bulldog getting to work on the Baron. But can they win the fight? That's the thing that's most important. And it looks like D Plus are not gonna be able to keep them interested. Oh, you gotta fight though. Like with Baron buff, it's it's you can't survive. Two inhibs are down. But they don't want to run the risk. Oh yeah, Shiv. Good catch. I, I'm, I, I'm sorry, I'm having a hard time <laughs> track of everything that's happening, Atlas. No, you're fine. I'm just uh, a bit confused as to why it isn't a GA. I like have, the GA idea. Yeah, we have Bulldog with GA, no boots. Like yeah. Classic. I like the no shoes. You you know DK, all they're looking for. Oh, oh, King, 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 he flashes over the delivery of Toss and they take him down! Oh, Seismic Shove goes wide. Dudu is going to turn up the Impale. It'll connect onto Showmaker, but he has a go golden button. And aiming, oh, it's so dangerous, but he survives. Andil, he's going to go down. They get to the kill King in those the now. Base. He, uh, he finds the Mystic Shots, and now it's Guangdong Freaks. They don't have the Zeri anymore, and D-plus Kia once again in the longest game of the split. They will be taken down at the very last moment. I like the vibe. As, all right, here we go. Yep, that's the heart monitor. As Quantum Freaks definitely had the most convincing advantages in this series. Infernal Soul also helping them out. But my goodness. They and can't because it's been banned. Oh, yeah, a very good catch. Uh, actually, on the first rotation. Should have caught that one. Thank you, Atlas. But I'm I'm, I'm left scratching my head. I think the first rotation for Kwangdong was exceptional. But now that the chips have fallen, uh, see a switch up and see what happens in game number three. But first, in game number two, let's get into it. Is there ever a time to have a full house? This is definitely it as Showmaker. That's one for the crowd. It's been a while since we've seen it, you know? Especially piloted by the man himself. You know, Zeri's there, but outside of that, this is a pretty low Riot level game. We don't have Cassante. <laughs> <laughs> we don't we, we don't have I mean, Skarner. As, as far as the age of the champions, like D plus on the top side, they were almost released, you know? Like Vi yeah. was 2011, I'm pretty sure, maybe 2012. You know, Rel and Viego are, are a little bit newer, but I think Kwangdong is also doing a good job. Jax obviously has been there since forever. Wow. Yeah. I mean, DK is going to be a lot earlier on the play. So yep. nicely done here. Good recovery by Lucid and aiming and killing and again, putting out this early pressure. Yep. Something, something, lane priority. Uh, yeah, I think AD build first came out. Yep. I don't think we've seen him AP in quite a while. All right, King could be in trouble here. Does have his flash available. Really doesn't want to... Oh, that body slam. Who is this guy? The W as well to make sure he doesn't take too much damage. Damage reduction, keeping him healthy. Yep, level six has been hit. We'll have to keep our eyes out for the Destiny Gate combo. We did have a rule throughout the ages, and that is... If you manage to get the first Destiny play to work out, which is happening right now, then it's going to be great, as that is a very long-distance card. But that could guarantee some grubs. They get the flash out of Cuz. Yeah. I like that flash from Cuz. Actually, it gives them the opportunity, if DK don't respect, to go back in and try and make a play. All right. King and moving in. Finds the body slam onto Cuz. There's a Vault Breaker as it's well. The flash. chase CC so good. And like you say, no flash, no chance. And now aiming. 
is down here towards the bottom side. Great knock-up with the grand entrance from Kellen. These minions, that means that he has to run a really long way away. He'll miss out on this entire wave as in goes aiming, finds the ulti. Grand entrance onto the horse. A little bit of a split here as there is the cleanse and the Featherstorm both out. And the Blade Caller not going to land on the aiming. Kellen takes a little bit of damage from it, but man, this Gragas is having just the greatest of times. Different Gragas, but it's also still just, just Gragas. Yeah. All right, here's the Destiny. Leaper, remember, doesn't have Cleanse, doesn't have ulti, doesn't have a chance to get out of this one. Kellen going to lock it down. Some star-crossed lovers there as now Andal. Yeah, there's four people. He is just dead. Only Lucid and aiming required, and Cuz just here a little bit too late. I appreciate you. I appreciate you too. I'm trying my best as well. But it's these games, all of them, even though it is like if Quantum Freaks wins here, it's four games. It feels like an eternity. It's just been a long, long day. It's because there's been so many games. It's the, in the intensity of the game. It right? is. It is. As Lucid is walking up air. Do note, Showmaker has his ultimate double teleport available for the top laners as well. Yeah. See where the Showmaker can get in. Does have heal, not smite. It has still pressed the Destiny button. There's the Extendo Beam. Knock up onto Andil. They do lock down the Dragon. It's a Hextech Soul. Infernal into Hextech. Okay. They see the, the base gate uh, being taken. The Hex Gate, sorry. And then they immediately throw Shelly in there. There's a Weaver's Wall. Going to see whether they can lock down aiming. Of course, doesn't care about walls that much. A Shattering Strike, just a trade of CC. King and King in. Finding the angle, good slow onto Andal, they know, and he's pushed into the wall. The Vault Breaker doesn't quite get there, but the one-two punch will. And there goes the only tank on Guangdong Freaks. And so, when's the moment where things are going to come maybe, back around? Maybe, maybe it is right now, exactly right. Aiming! Going to get over the wall. He is there. He uh, and so that is going to be the end of that one. Showmaker presses the uh, R button. Oh, he is. He That's has, a yeah. long destiny right there. Uh, he has Lich Bane as well. Bulldog ulted as well in that fight. So Showmaker, I don't think he's going to take this. Uh, Atomolus, if you like. I, I just never heard of like a, a sandwich that has only... Uh, usually the salad is... With yeah, I don't, I don't know why I went with salad sandwich. Um, it's probably not the important part. It's the important part for Kellen is trying to get over this wall. He does so. There's the Heartbreaker as Quickness comes down. And King and just going to have to... Use the ultimate to force Cuz to back away. It's a lot of R buttons pressed, a flash pressed as well. Like the egg mayo. Oh yeah, the, yeah, Absolutely I mean it's just massive. egg mayo and We are just discussing words. sandwiches, and I feel like we probably could talk about the fact that Dudu is possibly getting closed in on. Base oh, gate gonna get taken gate. here by aiming. Ganked by a Zeri? That is not the Jax experience that you're looking for as he leap strikes, tries to get away. Destiny coming in as there's a flash from King and he wastes absolutely no time. But then the Blender comes down. Aiming holds his ground though. The shield bow so powerful. And there is the one kill for the Zeri. Lucid will take one and they sacrifice King in, but for the good of the colony. For an overextension on the side of DK and instead they find nothing as uh, Cuz, I was about to say, might be found here. Oh dear. Oh, He's trying Lucid. to slink around. Okay, there's the smite. That'll deny it as he flashes over. But Showmaker's there with the gold card. And not a lot that Cuz can really do. He's going to try and offer as much damage as he can, but Lucid's going to grab it. And now they're going to jump straight on this Baron. Teleport comes in from a newly respawned King in. And D plus. It's like game one never happened. Yeah, sure. Longest game. Yeah, sure, we're a bit fatigued. You know, it's the second series of the day. Unless Kingen says absolutely not, which he might. The wave just not quite lasting long enough, and there goes the Baron. We'll be able to grab this one as, oh, remember, he does not have the Feather Storm available, and he just dies. Look at King, and he just lets Aiming come over and cherry pick the kill. Showmaker now looking for some stragglers. And, no! Oh my goodness, gives him the thumbs up. The special delivery is Andil, I guess, like, came over for solidarity? As it's a double kill for Aiming. Of course, Aiming's the one that scoops up the kills. That's 5-0 and 1. This is Leaper, uh, standing where he should be. Yeah, they're coming here, don't worry. Hello, hello. I said hello. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Oh, man, the classic showmaker. Welcome, welcome. It's it's easy to forget, you know, with with the couple of the up and down years. It's, oh, guys, come on! Oh dear. Well, Andil, I think will struggle to survive this play. Uh, Showmaker is going to hold him in place for forever. Kellen, 
looks like a legitimate tank on this Rakan. I'm just not really used to the whole Warmog's meta with like the amount of health bar Rakans have these days. Yeah, we also haven't had a single actual 5v5 front to back, right? Where, well, we have, but they haven't really amounted to anything where Bulldog actually gets to have value against Kalen. And Atlas, the gold graph we saw just there. It's up and to the right line. as it's continuing to go in that direction. That's a six for aiming. As Leaper, he hops up into the sky and unfortunately had to come back down again. Showmaker, he's going to go golden to avoid dying to the turret. And this is going to be that. 14 to 1, an absolute shellacking as the Magnus Storm, it looks kind of cool. But I think that D-plus just want to finish off these kills and get into game at number 3 as soon as possible. Some more gold cards flying out and I tell you what, it's pretty good to see Showmaker back on his very famous Twisted Fate and look this good as Dindin, sorry, Dindin, he's not in this game. Dudu is gonna get taken out. He's gonna leap strike, trying to get to the fountain, but there's too much CC. And eventually, oh no, they will be benevolent. Oh, never mind. He'll be thrown around like a rabbit. <laughs> oh yes, they will. They will. <laughs> the game's over. We're gonna go to a game number three as D plus Kia make that one a whole lot shorter. It's just, uh. I think that we are very anti Zaya. I think we have been for a while. Um, we know how she can work and how she's great at anti dive and trying to stay safe, but we need to we need to stop. We need to stop seeing that champion picked up. Going to lock in here. Is it a Kellen Renata angle? I think a Kellen Renata angle sounds pretty good. Yeah, because they are outside of you know the Ezreal poke or short range. Very different look on the Renekton. Let's see how it's going to go as we dive onto the Rift for game number three. How that one's going to go? Yeah. It's going to be very interesting. King and not going to have as much fun in this matchup as you do in a lot of other Renekton matchups. Showmaker, though, I saw that Gathering Storm. He is, oh, he is yeah. ready for late game, which is an interesting decision if you just look at these drafts at yeah. face value. You see the Renata, you see the Vi. But I do think that these type of compositions, they always have an out if they can just get a pick. The problem is that just getting a pick in, in, into Poppy and Morgana is going to be exceptionally hard. And I think there will be a bit of a microscope on uh, on Kellen. I'm really struggling to say words correctly. Um, I, it got to me earlier as well. Yeah, I, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the the eclectic series we had earlier. Kellen hit by a pot shot, and Lucid once again going for a little bit of something. Cuz, pretty perfect positioning here. Is he on time? As yeah, they look be. for it, yeah, you know. he's going to get out. And that is going to completely diffuse the situation. Great timing, like you were saying, from Cuz to get himself up here. Might be a grump that he misses out on. Huang Nong Den was able to make it happen this time around. Not the case. Don't want to run the risk of like trying to go into an extended 1v1 level 1 fight. Uh, rather against the Kalista, and now they get the Dragon. Great back timings to come through here for aiming in Kalen's one. If this is a Chemtech Drake next, we are in for another fun time, and we've had so many. Oh, it there is. There we go. Oh, it's it's. I think it's a guaranteed cloud. There's even more pressure on that. Lucid is also taking the top side as we speak. Yeah. Ooh. Okay, Kalen. Possibly in a little bit of trouble as Cuz is rotating over. Binding is going to connect. On to Kellen, who bails himself out, but it's not going to be enough. There is First Blood going over to Kuz. Perfect timing on the gank. His Bulldog, he doesn't have his ultimate, does have Flash. And hey. he, yeah, he he's, reads it. He's dashing out of there. Unbinds the soul, but not anything he needs to worry about. Aiming. Nice dodge, but Leaper is able to answer very, very well there. Yeah, he is she. Uh, that, that's, a, <laughs> that's a bit of a spike. And... So far in this series, hey. it's 50-50, and we'll see whether it's actually going to come out on top or not. In terms of giving him gold, the plan is working. Oh, yeah. Okay, he's up a 1,000 gold. That's the second dragon of place for Atlas. For Atlas! <laughs> <laughs> there it is. I mean, look, I didn't even look. I just knew. We knew it was going to be a Cloud Soul. It was just a matter of time. As Quantum Freaks, they're going to even out the bubs. Throws out a Zenith Blade, as King and you can see. In that brush, ready to teleport if they need to. Oh, DK wants to fight for sure here. Look at their spikes. Oh, yeah. Play to the Rune King is done. Well, we're going to press that teleport button. That's a great ward, and there it is. They pull the trigger as Lucid. He comes on over. It's not going to be the Herald secured, but can they find the fight? Is the question as King just walks past Andal. He wants Leaper as in goes Bulldog, but out he goes immediately afterwards. It's now Dudu that's tanking up the whole team, and finally, Aiming's able to get the first for D+. But 
trading one kill for the Herald? Maybe you're kind of okay with that on Quan Long's side. They can find it. It's definitely important. There's now King and he's going to rotate over. Kalanen aiming in the area. True Shot Barrage doesn't really find the mark, and they let the Dragon reset. In they go, though. Kalanen looks for the handshake, and he'll find it. Andil goes in and goes out via the Death Chamber. There's now Bulldog. He's dashing around, trying to find his opportunities. Uh, slice and Dice gets King and out of there. Look they look me. for a bit of a reset. Yeah, exactly. So Bulldog, he picked up the eye. That means that he's able to just take this one down. King in able to shove another wave in. Quanlong Freaks get control of the dragon. Lucid hits level 11. He's going to move on down once again. And we've got another fight. Aiming's back, though, as Bulldog doesn't quite find that one. He snaps back. Another handshake is good. There's a seismic shove as Steadfast Presence means Lucid can't really do anything. And Helicopter Poppy looks pretty cool, but isn't actually able to do anything. And there is that soul point, but there's a knockup. The double on the seismic shoves into the back line, goes King in and buys all the space. But Bulldog, it's his turn to react. He finds Showmaker. He also finds Kellen. And Aiming's able to turn it with the help of his friends in the end. But it was very close to a turnaround. Still, this time, a fight is brewing, Atlas. Yeah, Showmaker could be in trouble here. We'll see whether he does step up as Lucid. He walks in. The Zenith Blade misses, though. That's actually massive. And in goes Lucid. He's maybe a little bit too far forward, but they get the double knockback. There goes Lucid, though. That's going to start the fight off in the right way for Quantum Creeks. But now it's all falling apart. Is the bailout going to come through? The answer is no. But Kingen is a big old crocodile. And back comes Showmaker. Seismic shove eaten by the Black Shield, and there's the slice, the dice, the domination, and the triple kill for Kingen. And that is going to be a full-on ace, Atlas, for DK. For the Dragon, especially now that there's no teleporter Bulldog. Gets the knockup onto Showmaker here. He gets the Seraph Shield. There's the flash over, and Bulldog just solo kills him. That's one way to get it done as the Quantum Freaks they're back in and now it's their turn to possibly go for a Baron. Oh, Lucid is still alive. This is a big risk, but they want to try and go for it. And Bulldog, am I hearing some Chovy chants in the background? <laughs> Finds the 1v1. He'll have to snap back eventually, but this is going to be a guaranteed Baron. And there it goes. Solar Flare doesn't find too much good. Knock up True Shot Barrage onto the Crocodile. They just got a triple kill, but now he's I below think, half health. Yeah, just play for Soul. I would like to show Maker to. Maybe oh. the oh, they found him. The seismic shove pops him back. He does find the ulti though. As Bulldog, they will not give up. The hostile takeover too good as well. As Kingen trying to keep himself alive, the heroic charge. Kingen's out of there. They managed to get the kill on Deleeper as well, and the damage has been removed. Lucid tries to get in on top of Andil. He's not offering anything back. As Showmaker's throwing rocks all over the place. The cloud. And they thought Kingen had him, had have gone back. Cuz can get a crazy steal. Bulldog should be able to finish his IE at that point. Well, they're just looking for any target here. The handshake does bring Andil back. Again, it's a late black shield as he's taking a lot of damage. They both change their focus to Leaper, and the bottom lane is eviscerated immediately. Teleport coming in from King in here as well. He's on barely any help, but Bulldog is going to get caught by the W. The Ruthless Predator has never been named so well as King in dives on in, and Dudu. He's the last man standing. D plus Kia just destroyed them. And if it's only Dudu standing, they can chew through him without a problem. Yeah, there was some black cleaner oh. stacks that time around, I think. As long yeah. as he can output enough damage, there is an angle. He needs to get into the enemy back line. He's on a ward. True Shot Barrage finds absolutely nothing, though. Wall's going to come down. Showmaker splits the battlefield as Dudu tries to get rid of the Callista, and he's successful in doing so. Lucid gets rid of Bulldog, though. Dudu is burning down, and Kingen is a crocodile possessed as they dive in. The Yone gets taken down, and once again, it is just a wipe from D plus Kia. They need none of these objectives. They will ace them where they stand. And D plus will be second place at the end of week three. A riveting series, Atlas. Man. Game number one, a roller coaster. Game number two, a stomp. And game number three, different from Ida, really. It felt like Huang Nung were so close to making the leap to that promised late game but they just never got there. And DK gonna go up to five and one. What a bounce back.
after an arduous game number one. We can get it. Yep. And uh, they said also, head coach, keep your promise. Um, and we don't actually know what the promise is. I, I assume it's a good dinner. That's often what it is. Uh, and so maybe that's what it was. Thank you very much, guys. This is Deer for the POG interview translation, joined by Showmaker and Kingen on the side of D Plus Kia, who just secured their fifth victory. Congratulations. Thank you. In the matchup of two 4 1 one loss teams, D Plus Kia is victorious and rises to second place. How do you feel? Yeah, today determined who would take tech second place. And given that we would get a break after, I really wanted to win today and I'm very pleased that we were able to secure today's victory. And you guys got a proper payback from Spring and you even got nominated for Best Ceremony, Kingen. How do you feel? For week three matches, I'm really glad that we were able to get two clean victories. And yeah, we actually mentioned in the last POG that uh, we would send our opponent to the lower ladder and you know, in game, game one, it was really tough and I feel like we definitely got outplayed and as long as we, uh, because we played so calmly, we were able to win today and I hope that we can continue this momentum. And after the longest game in game one, you guys went into game two with nothing but confidence from the draft to early game control and the gameplay. So what feedback was given for you to show up so differently? Yeah, given that we were able to accomplish everything that we were supposed to in game one, uh, I believe that <laughs> you know, we said, they they did prepare Tristana really well, and we said, okay, lots of respect to you, we have to also fight back accordingly, so I think being calm and playing accordingly actually helped out. And so, with the TF pick in game, t uh, game 2, was it a mid-TF from the start or a flex pick? Yeah, it was actually a pretty good flex pick, but in the end, I was pretty confident with TF, so I ended up playing him. And there's been some discussion about mid-TF being viable, and you had such a great performance today, so how likely is it that we'll see mid-TF in the future? So TF used to be a meta where he's always picked in the blue side, but I feel like it's with the change in the meta, I believe that whoever is a good TF player will play TF in the future. Kingen, you utilize Gragas and Renekton so well, being the reliable pillar for the team. And given these champions aren't really picked very often in the current patch, how are you so influential with them? I believe that th these are some really well-balanced champions, and I'm also pretty quite confident with playing them, and I actually do prefer these picks, and that's why I went with them. And yeah, Kingen, the King Renekton is back. Let's take a look at the following Baron replay. Can you walk us through the team fight angle here? To be honest, we were actually so ahead, and with the enemy lacking damage without the Yone, I feel like I was just looking at Yone from the start to the end of the game, and I feel like the enemy comp was just so good against, or I guess Renekton is really, really good against the enemy comp, so I think we had a really smooth game. And in game three, of course, you had a, a great early advantage, creating a gap to secure Drake ad objectives, and it was a solid setup, but there were some dangerous moments as well, so what did Guangdong give you the most trouble with? I did think that their team fight is very solid. And compared to how they were doing in spring, they have become a very strong team. And I believe that they definitely kept us on our toes. And I believe that they also have a high ceiling that, uh, that allows them to develop into a stronger team over time. And Showmaker, according to your mic check at the very end, did Zephyr promise you guys anything? What was it?
하기 전에 약간 대기 시간에 So before the draft phase in game 3 올리기 위해서 감독님이 이기면 휴가 하고 싶다고 하셔가지고 Get our the team spirit up, and he offered us to give us one extra day of break. So I hope you keep your promise, Sefa. And so after the break next week, week four of LCK will be played in patch 14.13. So what will be the highlight of this patch, Showmaker? After reading the pitch note, uh, there's a, a lot of nerves regarding a lot of the common picks right now, and a lot of changes in the runes. But I believe that we'll just have to play it out. We'll just have to play well. And what about you, Kingen? I believe that we'll have to get a feel of it after scrimming. I do feel like all the good picks will stay, remain as good picks in the future. I think it just really depends on how, how well you play. And so after your vacation, you will face Genji. So what is your resolution? Showmaker. It's been a while since we beat Genji. And I really want to go kill my own opponents, but I've been getting killed, so I want to say I will kill them this time around. And Kingen. Yeah, I wanted to stay modest, but since our team captain is coming out like this, I want to say we will kill you. Looking forward to that, and that's the end of the interview from Showmaker and Kingen, and back to this space. Thank you.